Update 1.89 Imperial Navy introduced four new SPAAGs sitting at BR 10.0. Thanks to the fearsome Soviet Tunguska, top jets are already well aware of how deadly the combination of air-to-air -air missiles and a modern radar station is. Now, there are even more SPAAGs like that. The US, Germany, the UK and France all have their own. Let's see what makes them different from each other and from the Soviet AA missile system that we're already familiar with. Due to the fact that all these vehicles are equally somewhat on the slower side and can be taken out even by high-caliber machine gun fire, let's focus on the part of their kit that really sets them apart – their firepower and detection and tracking capabilities. Let's start with the American vehicle. The ADATS is outfitted with both a 25mm autocannon and an anti-aircraft missile system with depression elevation angles of 0 to 85 degrees. All missiles are loaded at once, meaning that you can fire all of them off almost simultaneously if needed. By the way, they're no regular SAMs. They penetrate up to 900 millimeters of armor, making them one of the most potent ATGMs in the game. As a result, ADATS is fully capable of hunting both aerial and ground targets. Furthermore, its missiles travel in an almost flat trajectory with a max speed of 1,000 meters per second. And there's only a very small blind zone in front of the vehicle. <laughs> Neat. If you're unable to solve all your problems with SAMs, there is always a trusty autocannon. It doesn't have a particularly impressive rate of fire, but its sub-caliber belt, punching through 100 millimeters of armor at 100 meters, will put a damper on any MBT's parade, considering you aim for its sides, of course. What about the main selling point of the modern SAM system? Its tracking and detection capabilities? ADATS uses its radar station only for scanning, while its missiles are optical guided, which means that as long as you are locked on a target, you can switch off the radar and guide the missile while being invisible to enemy radar. Moreover, you don't even have to switch the radar on. If you locate the target yourself, you'll be able to track it. There is a drawback to finding targets manually, though. This way, you will be able to track targets only within a 45-degree arc. What do we have, then? Great versatile missiles and an autocannon that can be fired on the move and utilizes a nifty lead marker when shooting at aircraft and some stealth capabilities, allowing you to guide a missile to a target you're currently tracking while remaining undetected. The list of flaws includes limited ammo, a somewhat restrictive tracking arc, relatively high SP cost in mixed RB due to the versatility of the vehicle, and also the lack of smoke grenade launchers. ADATS has a smoke generating system though. Moving on to the duo of the vehicles fielded by France and Germany. That's right, both nations use the same-ish Roland anti-air missile system mounted on different mobile platforms. It is a dedicated AA system with missiles that are in no haste to destroy their targets. They fly at the speed of around 500 meters a second, the slowest of their class. At the same time, these missiles are designed in a way so that they don't lose speed and are very maneuverable to the very end. Two missiles are loaded at the same time and can be fired off almost simultaneously. After that, it takes the systems 10 seconds to reload. Both vehicles are equipped with AA missiles as their only weapon. They're all about fighting aircraft and can't deal with anything else. When it comes to their tracking and guidance capabilities, though, there is a big difference. The French vehicle scans and tracks the same way as the ADATS and has the same limitations as well, while the German vehicle is noticeably different. 
It relies on its radar station to both track and locate targets. That means that the radar can't be switched off even after you fired a missile, allowing enemies to detect you. On the other hand, the German Roland can lock on targets within a 180 degree arc, which is pretty great. There are a few other differences as well. The German Roland II system has good depression and elevation angles. Its elevation is from minus 10 degrees to 80 degrees, allowing you to launch missiles almost straight up on even terrain. Uh, wait a second, you might say. Is that a problem for other SAM systems? Apparently, yes. With elevation angles of minus 10 to 30 degrees, the French Roland has some difficulties when trying to engage a target that is passing right above it. The German variant is clearly superior in this regard. Finally, this SAM has an advantage that both systems share. The most devastating warhead among all AA missile systems in the game. It's great if you don't like to shoot twice. Next up is the British Stormer HVM. It is armed with Starstreak missiles with somewhat underwhelming max depression elevation angles of minus 10 and 65 degrees. Also keep in mind that these are SAMs designed to fight lightly armored aerial targets. That means no tanks. Just like with both Rorans. Don't rush to conclusions, though. First of all, upon your arrival at the battlefield, you will notice that its tracking station has a 360-degree tracking capability. Yep. The target just has to be spotted by the Stormer's optical sensor. By the way, thanks to the fact that this is a passive detection system, you will never be detected by a warning radar system. That's a pretty big advantage, to say the least. That's not all. The Starstreak missile has a max speed of 1,400 meters per second. No other AA missile system can compete with that. Uh, but wait a second. Other missiles usually come with around 10 kilos of explosive filler, while the Starstreak has only a bit more than one. Thing is, the Starstreak isn't just any missile. Sometime after the launch, three dart submunitions are separated from the rocket motor. Each of the darts guided by a double laser beam riding system, and every dart carrying an explosive warhead with high kinetic energy. You just have to hit the target with at least one of the three. Another strength of the Stormer HVM lies in its ammo count. You bring 16 missiles to the fight, 8 already in the launchers and 8 in the vehicle hull. At the same time, it's probably the trickiest anti-aircraft missile system on the list. Only an experienced player will be able to get the most out of its fast, unusual missiles and its unique tracking and detection systems. If you're good at it, though, <laughs> pilots will find it very difficult to escape your wrath. That's it for the newcomers. What about our veteran AA missile system? The ZPRK-2S6, the most important part of the Tunguska kit, is that it has access to both 30mm 2A38 automatic cannons and 9M311 anti-air missiles. The depression and elevation angles are pretty decent, from minus 9 degrees to 85 degrees. Cannons have a very high rate of fire, 2,000 rounds per minute. There are two belts to choose from, a high-explosive fragmentation one and another one with armor-piercing rounds and tracers. It takes only a couple of seconds with either of them to cripple or even destroy the most modern of MBTs. If you shoot at its sides, uh, of course, you can do that on the move as well. Tunguska has no problem with that. Another nice feature is that you receive a special lead marker when engaging enemy aircraft. Soviet missiles don't break any records. 
but are pretty decent nevertheless. Pure SAMs that fly at the speed of 1200 meters per second. At the same time, Tunguska is pretty good in its locking onto a target and tracking departments. It uses optical systems for target tracking and missile guidance, just like the ADATS and the French Roland. The Soviet SPAAG also tracks targets within a 180 degree arc, just like the German vehicle. All in all, the Tunguska is very versatile. Thanks to its autocannon, it, just like the ADATS, can easily deal with ground targets while its decent AA missiles and an advanced radar station allow it to expertly clear the skies of any aircraft. At the same time, the vehicle also has the same big flaw as its American counterpart, very limited ammo. The Tunguska comes with just eight missiles and 2,000 rounds for its autocannon, not much. It also has very thin armor, even compared to already measly defenses of other SPAAGs. The American ADATS and the Soviet Tunguska provide you with versatile and powerful means of destruction, but both of them make it very easy to run short on ammo. The German and the French vehicles make short work of aerial targets and are easy to learn. Finally, no vehicle is better than Stormer at annihilating enemy aircraft, but it certainly takes some time getting used to using it. Every single one of them is unique in its own way, but all these vehicles share the same strength. They excel at hunting jets. The fight is on. Swift maneuvers versus advanced fire control systems. Let's go! See you in battle.